If you are able to read these four books and retain at least 25 to 40% of these four books, you are without a doubt in my mind and in my friends' minds completely capable of being a quantitative trader and breaking into the space. Now, whether you What the hell's up, my disciples? Coding Jesus here. This is the long-awaited video, the video you've all wanted me to make, the video about which books you should read if you want to break into the space of quantitative trading. Now, if you're currently a quantitative trader, I think you'll still benefit from watching this video. And if you are an aspiring quantitative trader, this is definitely the video for you. Now, where are my manners? Who the hell even am I? My name is Coding Jesus. I am a quantitative developer, meaning I write server and client side applications for traders at the quantitative trading firm or proprietary trading firm rather that I work at. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what's a quantitative developer doing recommending me books on quantitative trading? I am glad you asked. While yes, I am only a humble quantitative developer, I do have a network of friends that are quantitative researchers and quantitative traders that work at places like Jump Trading and Citadel. I've reached out to these friends, they've brought back a list of books that they believe that you will all benefit from, and I have sifted through this list and selected the top five books that I would like to recommend to you if you want to break into this space. Now guys, what I really don't like about the world of quantitative finance is that there's so many essays and books that are extremely dense. They are very, very hard to read through and I don't want to recommend those books to you, and I won't be today, because those books, to be frank, could be included in a CIA torture program. They're actually that hard to read and they won't actually help you land a job because they aren't practical. They are the tip of the spear financial concepts that aren't going to be asked in an interview and they also won't be tested in the actual practical application or the battlefield of quantitative trading. When by that I mean you won't be actually using those concepts on the job. So without further ado guys, let's get into my first book recommendation. My first book recommendation is under this massive pile of books. If you guys know me, you've known that I've recommended this book before. It is Option Volatility and Pricing by Sheldon Natenberg. Why is this book important and how do I look at this book? To me, this book is really a reference guide. It is a reference guide for key financial concepts out there. Now, what does this book do? Well, this book starts you off at the basics, pretty much what's a financial contract. And it starts moving you up to the binomial pricing model. It goes into option Greeks. It goes into what's a volatility smile. Uh, various financial concepts such as the black Scholes model. Uh, it also talks about things such as uh, position analysis, stock index futures and options, models and real world applications, uh, etc, etc. Now how do I read this book personally? Well what I like to do is, as, as you can see here, I like to make little notes. So as I'm reading this book, I'm constantly making notes. Because this is a reference book, once I want to revisit a concept, maybe during the day while I'm at work, I will go back to the notes that I've written in a given chapter and I will go ahead and read them. Now this book is particularly great because the, the author is really contemplating the concepts that he's describing with you as you read the book. So you will be asking yourself questions. Why does this work this way? Why does it work that way? And the author actually asks these questions in the book and he explains them, or he answers these questions rather, he explains them in a very easy to understand and digestible form. There is no complex mathematics in here. There are charts that ex help really uh, accentuates the points that the author is making. Okay, so don't be afraid of complex math. That's not in this book. And if there is any math here, it is actually broken down quite simply. Now guys, this book is so important. You know, I can't stress enough the importance of this book. This book's so important that an intern at the firm that I work at won't be caught dead without this in a two meter radius of his desk. All right, so make sure if you wanna start, that you start with this book. Alrighty guys, now I also wanna talk about another book that I believe you can actually replace with this book if you don't wanna buy this book in particular. And that book is Dynamic Hedging by Nassim Taleb. Now guys, a lot of my quantitative trader friends haven't actually read this book. They've read Dynamic Hedging by Nassim Taleb, but a lot of others have read this book. So it's really a pick the book that you wanna read the most and pick the author that you wanna read from the most because those two books are interchangeable and they are both online for a relatively modest price of around 30 to $40. So you're not gonna run you know, thousands of dollars on these books. Alrighty guys. What's another book that I recommend? Well, the second book that I recommend isn't a reference book. It is more of an interview prep and refresher book. That book is called Frequently Asked Questions in Quantitative Finance, second edition by Paul Wilmot. Okay, now why do I like this book? Well, this book has a lot of the concepts in the actual reference book, but it breaks it down into two to three pages at maximum. Now, why, 
why do they do that? Well, this book is really made to be kind of like an interview prep book, a reminder book, a book to remind you about key concepts without having to read through the minutia of those concepts that are described in the reference book. Now, I really like this book as well for, for the sheer fact that the actual author is stepping on a communist flag. Uh, but above and beyond that, what's great about this book is, even though it's a refresher book, if you'd like to read more about the fundamental concepts here, let me find a page for you. It actually has a references section, okay? It has a references section and further reading in case you want to go into the details of the actual concepts that are illustrated in this book. Now let's take a look at the actual uh, table of contents for this book so we understand what's in it. This book starts off like any other book with its table of contents, but the primary section in this table of contents is the FAQ section, okay? The FAQ section is around 200 pages, and like I said, guys, that's the two to three page uh, section that dis or sorry, it's a 200 page section that has two to three pages for each theme. Okay, that's the section, that's the FAQ section. So you have a question, for example, what is Iota's Lima? And they'll explain what Iota's Lima is in around two to three pages, like I said, guys, with a further reading section. Now, what's really great about this book and why I'm emphasizing this book to you guys here is the fact that it goes above and beyond simple financial concepts. It also talks about things that you will need in the actual interview, practical applications of the actual interview. Now, what are those? Well, for example, brain teasers. This book has an entire section on brain teasers, 30 pages on brain teasers that I can guarantee you will probably come up in one of your interviews. Another part of this book that's really oriented towards the interview process and making sure that you land the job is that it has a section on getting a quant job. That section is, I believe, also around 30 pages, and it goes through everything from the interview, to how you should dress, to how you should act, to what you should say, to what people get wrong about the job, what people get right about the job, how you should present yourself, et cetera, et cetera. So guys, if you're looking for a refresher, if you're looking for a book to prepare you for an interview, this is definitely the book that you wanna keep on, on hand. And in fact, it's, it's quite pocket-sized, so you can throw it in your bag, read it on the subway, and just help refresh your own financial concepts even if you already made it into the space of quantitative trading. Alrighty guys, I already talked about a reference book and then a refresher book. I think if you understand the concepts in this book, you are more than set for at least a junior trading position at the top proprietary firms in America or in the world, really. That's just how important these concepts are and that's just how powerful these books are. But I also wanna talk about another concept or a book rather that reflects this concept that a lot of you have been asking me for. Now, a lot of you have been asking me, Coding Jesus, do I need to know how to program? How proficient do I need to know program or how proficient do I have to be in programming to land a position as a quantitative trader? Now guys, this is a really good question. Currently, learning programming is not a must have. There are a bunch of traders that don't know how to write a single line of code. But if you wanna help separate yourself from the pack, let's put it that way, then you are going to want to learn how to program and you're going to want to need a book that will teach you how to program the fundamental concepts that you will be using on the job as a quantitative trader. Like I said, guys, currently, you might not even have to pick up this book because it's not a requirement, but it will definitely help you stand out. In other words, it's not a must have, but it is definitely a nice to have. What is that book? I don't personally have the book, but you can find it online. It is called Python for Data Analysis by Wes McKinney, okay? Why is this book important? Well, guys, let's first talk about the author. Not only is this book published by O'Reilly, and I love the way that O'Reilly writes their books, this author also comes from a mathematics background and I believe has worked in the space of quantitative finance. He graduated with a degree in mathematics from MIT, and he explains everything extremely simply with practical examples and applications. So throughout the book, he will be writing programs alongside of you while teaching you the fundamental concept that you need to actually write these programs. Now, what does he go through in this book? Well, he starts about really from the fundamentals of Python, so you don't need to know how to write a line of code before you jump into this book. And he will go through things like pandas. In fact, I believe he is the founder of the pandas data frame um, he is the actual writer of the, the founding writer of that package um, in Python. He also talks about NumPy, how to group data, how to aggregate data, time series in Python, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the author really comes from the background that you want to be in, and he writes his book via the lens of that background, which is extremely important. Alrighty, guys, let's look, let's get into the next book that you will read. And as you guys can see, while I'm going through this list, I'm taking parts of various concepts that you will need to learn to become a quantitative trader. For example, option trading and microstructure. 
That's the first book that I talked about. The next book that I talked about was a refresher. So it talks about the fundamental concepts you will need to break into the interview. The book that I just talked about focuses on programming. And this next book talks about the mathematics that you will need to know to break into the space of quantitative trading. Now guys, a lot of people ask me, what math do I need to know? Do I need to be a mathematician? Do I need a master's degree? Do I need to be a PhD? The answer is no, you don't need to be a PhD. But you do need to understand linear algebra, stochastic calculus, and probability and statistics to be able to pass that bar to break into the world of quantitative trading. That doesn't mean as a quantitative trader you will be spending 90% of your time writing down mathematical proofs. In fact, you'll be spending 90% of your time trading because that's literally what's in the job description and in your title. But regardless, guys, quantitative trading firms use math as a minimum bar to filter candidates, and that's why I want to recommend this book to you. Now, what is this book? This book is Linear Algebra by Gilbert Strang. Okay, this book starts off from solving linear equations and it goes all the way to complex vectors and matrices. So guys, this book is going to be extremely important for your development and for your breaking into the space of quantitative trading. Now, what I particularly like about this book, even though I haven't personally read it, is that it goes through various problems through the chapters. It doesn't just focus on all these complex mathematical proofs. It goes through problems and it provides solutions. Now, while I haven't personally read it, my quantitative trader friend at Jump Trading has read it, and he is reasonably confident to recommend this book to me because he knows that this book will be useful for you out there. So let's go ahead and thank my friend out there at Jump Trading, because this book will be the book that you will need to read if you want to become proficient at math and be able to achieve that minimum level of competency to pass that interview with flying colors. Now, what's great about this author is that this author actually has a lot of free courses on MIT OpenCourseWare. So if you would like to understand how he writes this book, you can really go ahead and read his lectures, or not rather read his lectures, view his lectures online. And the way that he describes his lectures is really going to be the style in which he actually writes his book. If you want a harder book, which one of my quantitative researcher friends recommended, um, above and beyond this linear algebra by Gilbert Strang, you can go ahead and read a book called uh, Linear Algebra Done Right. Now, I'm not sure if it's by the same author or a different author, but it is called Linear Algebra, D Linear algebra Done Right. I will link it in the description box below. Alrighty, guys, those are the four key books you need to read if you want to break into the space of quantitative trading. Now, this, this video is about five books, and we'll get into the fifth book in a, sec in a session. But guys, if you are able to read these four books and retain at least 25 to 40% of these four books, you are without a doubt in my mind and in my friends' minds completely capable of being a quantitative trader and breaking into the space. Now, whether you can handle the role over the long term, that's a totally another topic for a separate video, but it will definitely provide you with the competency that you need and the confidence that you need to break into the space. All right, guys, now the next book that I will recommend will be more essay-based. In fact, it is a collection of essays, and it is more for the advanced quantitative trader or quantitative researcher because it does go a bit more into the formula part of quantitative trading. Now, like I said, guys, the first four books that I recommended are more than enough to break into the space. But this book is for the person that is more seasoned or would like to go a little above and beyond. And that book is Advances in Portfolio Management by Grinold and Kahn. Now, these two people have been cited in more academic papers than months that I've been alive. And they are really kind of thought leaders in the space of quantitative finance and portfolio management. This is really for the, a book for the person that wants to go beyond being a trader to eventually being promoted to a senior trader, or in other words, an actual team lead, the person responsible for managing the portfolio's P&L and the risks associated with that P&L and focus on executing those strategies. Now, this book, like I said, is a collection of essays, so it's not going to be an extremely dense book. And the best way to read it is to really read the essay that you find most interesting. For example, in chapter two here, and I've read through some of these chapters, in order to actually vet this book for you guys. In chapter two, he or rather chapter three, I believe, he talks about seven insights into active management. And the first insight is that active management is worse than a zero sum game. So if you wanna actually understand what that means, you can go ahead and read this insight. Another insight that he has is that alphas must control for scale, volatility, and expectations. And in this book, he actually talks about how you know if you are a good portfolio manager. In other words, what your win rate should be. Now, don't get this confused with the win rate or the perverted version of win rate that day traders will often talk about. The actual academic definition of win rate is your ability to predict the uh, signage of returns. So standing at time equals zero, Apple trades at $100. What's Apple going to be tomorrow at open? 
And what he really talks about here is that a 53% win rate is actually extraordinary. Now, when you talk to day traders on forums on Reddit and online, they will talk about 90% win rates, 100% win rates, 140% win rates. Obviously, that was a joke, but you know they're talking about all these high win rates, but they've perverted the term win rate from predicting the signs of returns to some esoteric strategy win rate, which of course is irrelevant because you can have a strategy with a 90% win rate that has a negative expected value. So it's totally meaningless. All right, guys, that was the fifth book, or rather the five books that you should read if you want to break into the space of quantitative trading. As I mentioned, the first four books are really all that you need, but if you want to go above and beyond, and if you're really intellectually curious, then this book is going to be the fifth book that you want to read. Now, guys, I have a little uh, surprise bonus book for you in this list of five books. That surprise bonus book is going to be called this, and I'll tell you why you should read it, especially if you're coming from the background of a day trader. That book is called, and I have it, but I lent it to a friend because he was interested in this book after my recent live stream on day trading, Coin, why a coin flip is a better strategy than using technical analysis in the financial stock market. Once again, technical analysis is mostly bullshit. Why a coin flip is a better strategy than using technical analysis in the financial stock market by Tim Morris. Now, why is this book going to be important? It's going to be especially important if you've come from the realm of day trading, because to be frank, guys, a lot of what you've learned in day trading, you will need to unlearn. And this book really helps you unlearn it. Now, this book isn't a very large book. It is around 70 pages, but it really breaks down why technical analysis is, to be frank, entirely bullshit. I can go through the academic papers with you guys. And in fact, I have gone through them during my live streams. But if you're not interested in reading through the academic papers and guys, I wasn't really interested in reading through them either because I already know that technical analysis is bullshit, then this book is really a book that you want to read through in order to snap yourself out of the programming that the fake data trading gurus out there will try to sell you and all those, you know, course sellers out there will try to sell you on. Alrighty guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. All the links to the books that I've mentioned will be in the description box down below. And what else will be there is a link to my Discord, a link to my Patreon, and guys, my email if you'd like to get in contact with me. So thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure to share it far and wide, subscribe, and like. Cheers.